So for Dakar 2013, uh, I wore the Climb Adventure Rally suit, which was um, full Gore-Tex um, jacket with armor in it and bladder holder and everything like an all-in-one um, jacket and the Climb Dakar in the boot pants. Yeah, the actual performance of the jacket in terms of um, you know breathability and temperature and range of what it could deal with was actually pretty good. Uh, the ventilation was good. One of the one of the downsides to the jacket was its weight and bulk. It was it was really heavy. Once I had everything in it, it was heavy, um, and. You couldn't really change, like, you you, you always had that Gore-Tex shell on. There's no way to remove it. Um, and despite all the ventilation in it, um, you know, it, it was still Gore-Tex. Everywhere there was material, it was Gore-Tex, which didn't allow any airflow through. So you were relying on all the vents in the jacket to pull air through the, through the jacket, which um, it actually worked okay as long as you were moving. But <laughs> if you stopped at all, then you, then you knew about it. When you go up to altitude uh, and you get specific weather systems at altitude, the weather changes dramatically and it becomes very, very cold, very fast. Uh, and you can also get horrendous rainstorms um, and a lot of precipitation. And um, I actually found that having that Gore-Tex, you know, having the waterproof nature of the jacket and being able to sh zip up all the vents and everything, uh, was a massive advantage because some guys were racing in like motocross jerseys and body armor uh, and they were freezing cold and wet um, so what it did is it told me that whatever whatever I go with in the future you have to have the ability to be waterproof to be dry and to be windproof to be warm so that's one of the biggest things that uh, that I learned from it in working with adventure spec we were always looking at trying to find a solution whereby it would fit all environments. So um, where it would be great in a really hot uh, environment where you wanted maximum ventilation. Um, obviously in the racing environment you want something that's light as possible. Um, and also something that offers that wind protection and waterproof protection as well. And, um, there was lots of discussions about how that might look and how it might feel and uh, what what is the system and the system you know we, we sort of together came to this conclusion that the system doesn't have to be one piece of clothing <laughs> it doesn't have to be just one big jacket that's trying to achieve everything um, it could be multiple pieces that work together in conjunction with each other to give you the solution that you need So the, the Atacama jacket and pants that I wore in Dakar 2017, uh, I, what I would say is that in the Dakar rally, 80% of the duration of the event is super hot, um, uh, really hot temperatures, blistering, you know, up to 50 degrees Celsius. So 80% um, of the time is spent in really high hot temperatures and you just want the maximum possible ventilation and comfort you can from your jacket. So because that was 80% of the riding, the priority was to really get that 80% uh, that of the, the climates to go through right. And for me, that was having a fully ventilated jacket and really good breathable pants that are comfortable and lightweight. and. Uh, uh, allow you just the things that you need in that environment and that's what we've got with the Atacama. So my my take on the layered system um, is this I want the I want to have the lightest possible clothing on me um, and the best suited for each uh, environment that I'm riding in and you'll you see from the Dakar 2017 that I find myself stopping in the liaison because it starts to snow and and I know that if I get wet and cold riding in snow it's going to be miserable for a long time like in reality it's going to take me two or three minutes to stop and put my windproof waterproof outer shell on um, and for me as an adventure and world traveler 
uh, and having that experience knowing that if I don't take care of myself and yeah okay it takes me a few minutes to put it on but I know for a fact that I'm gonna lose more than a few minutes if I get cold or if I get you know worst case something like pneumonia or something like that um, you know it's just important to take care of yourself and have the right equipment. So, um, yeah, I had a frustration because my hands were so cold I couldn't get it out, um, <laughs> out and put it on fast enough. But um, for sure, once I'd done that and got the right layer on, then everything was fine. You know, I rode for another probably five hours in freezing cold temperatures to arrive at the bivouac, and uh, I was in a lot better shape than a lot of the other riders. So that was important to me. So in testing the Atacama series uh, for well for the last sort of 12, 18 months really um, in the run up to Dakar 2017, uh, I tested it a lot on races to places, so travelling as well as um, some races also. And I tried lots of different systems, so I've used them without the neck brace and with the neck brace for racing, without the neck brace for travelling, and also with the protection underneath, so with the body armour. Um, I've used the, although the uh, Atacama has the pockets for the body armour, um, to put that body armour in the elbows and shoulders etc, I, uh, I have used it with the pressure suit. So when I was travelling I actually used the jacket with body armour in those pockets so that I only had one item to put on, uh, like one item of clothing. Um, but when I was racing I wanted something a little bit more uh, in, you know, something that would stick to my body a little bit better really with all the armour in and, and I also wanted chest protection so um, I used a, a pressure suit with all the armour on and just left the pockets empty on the Atacama jacket and that's how I ran the Dakar 17. Yes, so uh, how has it held up in accidents? I mean I never crash so um, there's no test, no I'm not only joking. <laughs> I had a big crash in 2017, uh, which saw me skating and tumbling down the road, um, and uh, yeah, felt that for a few days afterwards. Uh, I also had some offs on races to places, uh, where I uh, put it through its paces in places that I shouldn't have been doing it, but uh, uh, for sure the abrasion resistance seems okay, I never had any seams pop open or anything like that, it, it, I, we really like pushed it and and the thing is on races to places I was using it every day all the way through Central America I used this jacket every single day um, uh, pretty much all the way down to the start of the Dakar Valley so all the all the way from Central America down to um, essentially on Paraguay uh, I wore the version without the Liat collar um, so I had a standard collar um, yeah, and did some, I can't remember, 20,000 kilometers or something like that with it. So, uh, yeah, we used it a lot. Well, obviously the jacket is full mesh, so that it's not waterproof at all. I mean, if you're going to, if you've, you know, if you're in rain, you're going to get extremely wet without that outer layer. Um, the pants are not quite like that um, because they're not full mesh. Sure, they have vents on them, ventilation on them, um, but they're made from a different fabric. Um, so, you know, if you're riding, you go through puddles and things like that. Generally, it's not too bad, but if you ride through deep water like a river crossing, yeah, you're going to get soaked wet through. I mean, they're, they're not designed to be waterproof, and that's why I carried a pair of waterproof overpants with me on Dakar 2017. But I have to say, I only actually used the overpants probably two or three times in the whole race because for the most instances like a quick shower or you see a thunderstorm coming and it just goes by, um, I just left it and just carried on riding with the Atacamas. It kind of covers a wide range. For me, I like it because I do like to race uh, and I want something lightweight. Um, so, um, but I've also used it every day on travels on races to places. So I think as long as you've got the right layers to go with it, so like the windproof, waterproof outer layer, um, and you've got a mid layer to go underneath it for the colder mornings or wherever you ride, then you've got every eventuality covered. Um, and yeah, I, I personally don't think it's just for racing because I've used it for traveling as well. Um, but uh, that's for the individual to decide. <laughs>